In many parts of Africa, getting online is expensive, if not impossible. Although a third of the African population had access to mobile telephony at the end of 2007, the cost of the service remains out of reach of the majority. Access to electricity in Africa is also low or the supply unreliable. IDRC, Canada's International Development Research Center, whose Acacia program funds research into the development of the information society in Africa, managed a four-year Connectivity Africa program. Connectivity Africa was also supported by CEDA, the Canadian International Development Agency. Connectivity Africa's projects primarily explored innovative ways of lowering the cost of access and improving the use of electronic communications to enhance education and health services. We are implementing the Uganda Health Information Network project. That project is about empowering health workers. PDAs are what they use as end users. Data is everything, information is everything, because without information you can't know what to decide. I can now treat a patient according to the PDA. You just read, you diagnose and then the treatment. I look for an icon called documents to go. It has indication when do I give it, it has the action, the contraindications. This is the program we use, it's called Pendragon. We have now created the forms like a child health. The PDAs work together with other pieces of equipment called access points. The wireless access points make cellular calls to the server and the server routes that test as the right destination and it's a complete loop. Because this world is changing. It's a matter of click and getting new what? New information. How do you learn to say me? Et puis, ce qui s'est passé, c'est qu'un beau jour, elle était hospitalisée et on a décidé de présenter son dossier au cours d'une des séances de télémédecine. Et c'est là où on a découvert qu'elle était finalement suivie pour une malformation cardiaque autre. Au lieu de déplacer le malade sur 600 km, il est soigné ici euh, directement par les professeurs d'Alger, des CHU d'Alger. Toute la plateforme a été développée et réalisée euh, ici en Algérie avec des développeurs locaux. Donc vous avez euh, beaucoup de technologies euh, que vous mettez manipulées d'un côté. D'un autre côté, vous avez un aspect humain et humaniste. Et si on met les deux, euh, c'est une grande satisfaction. So in 1994, when we first came, there wasn't such a thing as a cell phone. We had what we thought was spare capacity. Thinking about it, we'd, we could have voice over internet protocol types, telephones and things, and the need was to get a telephone across to the hospice. It's very crucial because we're transferring patients there every day, you know, so we need to know, let the sisters know who we're sending across and what needs to be done. But it was intriguing for us to see stuff where we we just put the technology in and people discovered stuff themselves and identified their own uses. That's where community networks are really going to go in. You can see here it's a rural, rural place. Most of the time we'll be like on, on the street or doing nothing. But now I do have something to do. Keep myself busy, know about new things. Afnog is to an extent a progression of how the internet came to Africa, whereby we provide instruction for operators to operates career uh, class uh, internet. Uh, I'm lining up to get some books for ref reference material for most of what we've been doing at the workshop. I'm sure the folks at home are looking forward to this. Donc la différence entre cette formation et les formations que j'ai déjà suivies, c'est que la formation ici à Afnog nous a permis de toucher au cœur de la technologie. We've been able to uh, we might say incubate other important organizations such as the AFRINIC, the Numbers Registry. We are in charge of uh, managing internet number resources for the continent so that they can provide internet service. Uh, trying to push on the research and educational networks in Africa. In research and education networking, we want dedicated capacity going to education and research institutions at the lowest possible price. And we are also working very closely uh, with the Open Internet Alliance, uh, which is a, a regional research and education network. A contiguous mass of countries from the south of from South Africa up to Sudan, 
all with a legal framework to work together. So it's an exciting organisation to be part of the capacity building for the technical people, the working on the policy level and the social level of working with health networks, agricultural networks, you know, like agriculture research, to see this connectivity can make our jobs easier at every level. There's a card, there's a small card, a yellow card. You just put, there's a file there, you saw it inside there. That's where they pick everybody's files, and they pick them from there. That is going to be much easier because we have so many patients. So immediately, it's one in mine is 2187. They detect it from there, they pick the file. But all along, you have never missed your drugs because I no. can say since it's now four years, you have been on first line, which is good. With such a huge organization, with 70,000 patients at 18 different clinics, there's no way that you could keep track of who's who and what's happened with which patient if we didn't have an electronic database. Open Morrison itself is an electronic medical record system. It focuses on patient-based care, so hence everything revolves around a single patient's encounter. And in Africa, people often just can't buy commercial software because they just can't afford it whereas open source obviously circumvents that. What we wanted to do was to create a platform in which people could innovate and create really effective tools, but were able to actually share those different applications. And then we want to further modify open numerous such that uh, they can actually send uh, SMS messages to our patients. A country may pick and choose various components as they see fit or what, which would better suit their application. We call that the open architecture, which allows those independent systems to interoperate and to create an integrated health system. I really believe there's a tremendous amount of power the world will eventually see with this information system helping guide day-to-day -day care in very rural, remote parts of Sub-Saharan Africa. Avoir was very uh, focused on the development of an African e-learning system. Because we have a software development capability, we have a, an interest in e-learning as a domain within which the software can be applied, and we have people who are practice, practitioners in that domain. And so this is quite a nice uh, mix that gives us the ability to really explore what technology can do for teaching and learning. The first part was a distribution of Linux with the uh, services necessary for the uh, university uh, or other entity administrative. It's an open source, so the cost is very limited. It is African. There is easier reach for any support. So phase two is slightly different in that we are training people to become entrepreneurs in open source software development. We feel that now we can use it for you know, many other services on top of actually getting e-learning. So if a learner wants to enroll for each, any of these course units, he can maybe come and click here. Microfinance institutions do two basic things. One is that they collect small savings from their clients. <laughs> And then they issue loans. This section shows the savings, and this other section shows the loan. Uh -huh. We project in a year's time that we will have. 30,000 clients in the institution. That's a huge volume of work. You need now to have a way of ensuring that the data that you have has some form of integrity. When you go by, you can use Microsoft Word, you can use Excel, but you cannot change it and you cannot customize it to a level where you could use it individually in your own organization. We have an existing open source management information system which uh, is created by Grameen Foundation. And we as HEFOS have initiated this project which is funded by IDRC to implement this open source management information system in, in the East African context. Now MBFOS is an open source software which means when you download it you can use it as it is or you can customize it. We try to come up with an alternative system. We call it MIFOS Lite, which can be also uh, used uh, without uh, an internet connection. Every day brings a new challenge that you are able to work against the challenge that you feel, yes, it's a nice job to be in.